Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. American Comics. Trading Tom Cat at the Beginning. Chapter 36. This combat power detector is the first thing. As for the second thing, Locke looked at White Queen. Emma, it's time for Hellfire to rebuild. Locke has long wanted to rebuild Hellfire, but his combat power was not enough before, and there was a risk of being unable to suppress the field. But now, with the first class limit on the surface, he can be promoted to sub heavenly father in at least half a month, and he can withstand a wave even if the sky falls. Ordinary stress no longer matters. The White Queen's beautiful eyes suddenly lit up. Rebuilding Hellfire meant that preparations could be made to save her body. She was looking forward to this day more than anyone else. I will bring back all the assets of Black King Shao. White Queen said firmly. No, no, no. Locke waved a finger, that's not important. The most important thing about rebuilding the Hellfire has never been the so-called money. With that said, Locke looked at the other people again. Next, we all need to work together with one goal, to attract some powerful extraordinary beings to join the Hellfire that is about to be rebuilt. It can be a mutant or other existences. There are only two requirements. One is to be strong and to truly decide to join Hellfire. I don't want that after Hellfire is rebuilt, what I do most is to kill all kinds of spies with various purposes. We understand, the people present were stunned for a moment. This is the most important thing at the moment, and it will definitely not be in vain. The next moment, Locke flicked his finger, and a little bit of fluorescence as big as a grain of rice sank into the bodies of Rat Man, Pig Man, and Frank one by one. What is this? Frank asked. Some little gifts for you. This is a high purity energy crystal peeled off by three grains of Locke himself. Although it is only the file size of a grain of rice, it is enough for the current few people. After the rice grains entered the body, the three people suddenly felt that their spirits were countless times more energetic than usual. In the next period of time, your mental activity will be highly improved, and your thinking, understanding, etc. will be blessed to a certain extent. I hope that when you come back, no one will still be at the third rate level on the surface. The rat man said excitedly, Sir, we will never let you down. Locke nodded and threw two more books to rat man and pig man. They were, meditation technique, elementary level. They were definitely normal meditation techniques. Go ahead. If you can drag a few more strong men into the hellfire, there will be rewards later. Yes. Two people, one fat and one thin, turned around and left side by side. Frank, wait a minute. Frank looked at Locke calmly. What do you need from me? One of Frank's great advantages is that he never wonders about the so-called causes and consequences. He just gives orders and he completes them. Everything is so simple and crude. Frank, the rebuilt Hellfire will not be divided according to the original Hellfire levels. I am going to use playing cards as our Hellfire emblem. Among them, according to my plan, those below 10 are ordinary members, J to K are middle management, and the four aces above K will be the core management of the new Hellfire, and will also bring us Hellfire I call them the four great generals of Hellfire. A general can be called a general only if he can face an army head on with his own strength. Frank's eyes flickered slightly, what do you mean? Locke looked at Frank with a smile, who else would take the position of the number one general of Hellfire over you? Hearing this, Frank was silent for a while, but did not refuse, but said, I am not strong enough now. That's why I stopped you. With that said, Locke threw a piece of information to Frank. Frank opened it and looked at it, Ghost Rider. That's right, Ghost Rider. A special warrior originating from hell, possessing the powerful power to judge all sins. It is said that when a living being can resist the Ghost Rider's eye of judgment, it may take away the opponent's power. Frank's eyes suddenly lit up. I understand. He didn't ask how powerful it was, or even what would happen if he failed. He just grabbed the information and left quickly. Ghost Rider. I seem to have heard of this legend. It is said to be a very dangerous existence. White Queen said faintly. Definitely dangerous. Ghost Rider was originally an angel from heaven. He was induced to fall by the devil. He has super immortality originating from hell, plus the power to judge all evil and burn out all sins. Ghost Rider's judgment flame, theoretically, it cannot be extinguished, and you will die if you are hit. Then you're not worried that Frank will fail. Locke smiled slightly. 
If there is one person on this planet who can stand up to eye of judgment head on, that person will only be Frank. Furthermore, only by seizing the power of Ghost Rider can Frank be qualified to become our number one general of Hellfire. White Queen leaned her romantic body into Locke's arms, what about me? What position have you prepared for me? The second general. Locke gently lifted the opponent's hair, the position of general is not suitable for you. A charming and seductive smile appeared on White Queen's lips, if you're not a general, could you be K? Locke gently raised the other person's chin, naughty, you have obviously guessed it. Beyond the generals, there is also a king and a queen. Besides you, the White Queen, who else is qualified to become the noble queen of the new Hellfire? The White Queen's smile became more charming, and she leaned forward for a passionate kiss. Dear, help me rescue the main body. In my current state, I am not qualified to be the queen of the new Hellfire. A smile flashed across Locke's eyes, and now the White Queen has obviously completely returned to her heart. Good. White Queen's beautiful eyes lit up. When? It's now. As soon as the words fell, the two people's figures disappeared instantly. In the military, countless soldiers are intensively undergoing various professional trainings. Each of these most elite soldiers is full of iron-blooded aura. They are like flesh and blood fighting machines. However, if among the elite iron-blooded soldiers, there are two incompatible figures, strolling casually in the huge military area, they seem to be wandering at will, while criticizing with interest, a group of iron-blooded soldiers, like each cute, monkey. The White Queen leaned on Locke's arms with her delicate body and said in awe. My dear, your group mind control ability is better than mine. This is not mind control, it is a kind of hypnotic ability. Their five senses are all distorted by me at this moment. When you regain freedom and integrate the current projection further, it is not impossible for you to do it. White Queen nodded with a strange look on her face, where are we going now? Definitely talk to those senior military officials. Locke is not sure who captured the White Queen's body. The most likely candidate at present is William Stryker, not least because this guy is a fanatical mutant purger. More importantly, the organization that the three Cuckoo sisters in the future escaped from was the Purge Organization, and this organization was established by William Stryker. In addition, the Sentry Organization is also very suspicious. After all, there are too many mutants who have become experimental subjects of this organization. For example, the Red Devil, a former high-ranking member of Hellfire, has clearly become the experimental material of the Sentry organization. The purpose of Locke's trip was to learn about these two organizations from some senior military officials. After all, reality is not film and television, and it cannot be just the part shown in film and television. In reality, these two organizations are much more grand and complex. As for whether the military leaders are willing to exchange this information with Locke, who cares about that? I wandered into a tightly guarded conference room. At the moment, several military giants were having a meeting in this conference room. Seeing the sudden intrusion of the two people and what a military giant with keen reaction was about to do, Locke glanced casually, and as the chaos force surged out, everyone froze in place like a log. Emma, it's over to you. White Queen nodded and began to extract the memories of these military giants one by one. Locke, on the other hand, sat casually on the sofa. Suddenly, Locke's eyes lit up and he saw an interesting guy. The green fat man's father-in-law, the deep General Ross who, loves, the green fat man. With a casual hook, General Ross came to Locke's side lightly. A ray of chaos force overflowed, and he began to look through General Ross's memories like watching a movie. Hey, the green fat guy was actually born a long time ago. And according to General Ross's memory, this green fat father-in-law has been chasing the green fat man for a long time. Even Ross doesn't know where the green fat man is hiding now. Locke groped his chin. To be honest, Locke quite admired the green fat man. Note that Locke admires the green giant, Hulk, not the Bruce Banner he boarded. Hulk has the best fighting intuition and fighting instinct, and also has the super characteristic that the angrier he gets, the stronger he gets. However, Bruce Banner, who can control this power, does not have these excellent characteristics. He is just a man with a developed brain and simple limbs. Secondhand goods. This is also the reason why Bruce Banner, 
who was completely integrated with the Hulk in the later period, had his combat effectiveness reduced to a funny character, and he was completely unable to unleash the Hulk's amazing potential. It is said that Hulk is a spiritual mutation. In theory, it should be possible to separate Hulk from Bruce Banner. Locke has always admired the powerful warrior Hulk, not the funny character of Bruce Banner. He glanced at General Ross again and casually left something on General Ross. Although he was very interested, Locke had no interest in searching for the green fat guy all over the world. He just let this guy and the green fat guy fall in love and kill each other, and he could just wait and pick the peaches. Suddenly, an astonishing amount of spiritual energy burst out instantly. Touch, touch, touch. All the glass in the entire conference room shattered in an instant. Locke raised his head and looked at White Queen, whose chest was rising and falling violently, creating a wave. Emma, calm down. A wisp of chaos force flowed out, soothing the White Queen's violently fluctuating emotions. The White Queen took a deep breath and put on an extremely ugly smile on her face. Sorry, my mood swings were too violent. Glancing at an unknown military giant, the White Queen's eyes revealed a strong murderous intent. Honey, can I kill him? Locke smiled slightly, it's okay if you want him to die, but you can't do it yourself. When a mutant kills a military giant in a military meeting, the government officials who know the truth will go crazy. Locke is not afraid, but he has no interest in starting a war with those guys now. In the end, besides letting Locke ruthlessly kill tens of thousands, or hundreds of thousands of people, nothing else. Snapped. Locke lightly snapped his fingers, and a chaos force quickly filled the entire conference room. The next moment, the conference room seemed to be suspended and was reactivated, and the military giants began to argue and discuss fiercely. Locke and White Queen were sitting on the sofa, quietly explaining that the group of military giants in front of them were almost the same as street gangsters, and they frequently greeted each other's parents. Suddenly, a group of military giants seemed to discuss the most controversial point. The military giant that the White Queen wanted to kill, their emotions fell into an unprecedented intensity. They angrily took out a handful from a stone statue nearby and used it as a decoration. With his sword, he rushed towards the other giant who had been refuting him without saying a word. At this moment, the other military giants were shocked. Before they could stop them, the two veterans quickly fought together. Pissed, it was the sound of a sharp knife being inserted into the abdomen and large jets of scarlet blood spurted out, splattering the surrounding area with blood. At the last moment, the dying military giant seemed to regain consciousness. He saw two people, two people that other military colleagues seemed to be unable to see at all. One handsome young man, and the other, the boss, made the military giant's eyes widen in an instant, because he was so familiar with this. White Queen the reason why he was familiar was because he had made the final decision on the capture of the White Queen, and he was also William Stryker's immediate boss and backer. The White Queen at the moment was looking down at him with a malicious sneer. At this moment, the giant seemed to suddenly understand something. His pupils were wide open and he struggled violently. What did he want to do? Unfortunately, his life was going at an extremely fast speed and he was filled with a sense of powerlessness. He wanted to say what, but found that my language ability seemed to be completely blocked, and I couldn't say even a word. I could only feel the passage of life bit by bit under the cold gaze of the White Queen. When his life was completely reduced to zero, his eyes were still wide open, full of strong unwillingness, and one hand was raised with great force, as if he wanted to grab something. Locke stroked White Queen's silky hair. Emma, isn't this kind of revenge more interesting than simply killing him? The White Queen was leaning on his arms, her beautiful eyes seemed to be watering at the moment. My dear, I can't wait to rescue my true body. In a hidden underground base, William Stryker, with a cold and dark face, stared coldly at the experimental subject wailing in pain in the glass room not far away, his eyes filled with disgust as if he were looking at an insect. Mutants are the most disgusting things in the world. Even his biological son is still a disgusting and ugly bug in the eyes of this fanatical mutant cleaner, and he can't wait to kill him immediately. The reason why he didn't kill the essence striker immediately, who made him feel extremely humiliated, was because he felt that the other person had some value and could help him kill more mutants, that's all. Father. Father. 
Suddenly, a guy who was placed on the experimental table and looked similar to other experimental subjects wailed in extreme horror. William Stryker walked forward unhurriedly, looking indifferently at his biological son who was covered in various experimental equipment. What's up with him? The researcher on the side responded solemnly. His spirit is fluctuating violently, and it seems that he has been exposed to something terrible. William Stryker frowned, stepped forward, and said, What did you see? Even at this time, there was no gentleness in his voice, only coldness and disgust. Father. Father. He's coming. He's coming. What's coming? He is coming. He is the end. He is destruction. He is coming. He is coming. With a wailing roar of fear, Essen Stryker's eyes suddenly widened, and everything came to an abrupt end. William Stryker's expression turned ugly. What on earth did he see? Connect to his spirit. I want to see his last memory fragments. Please wait, we need to reset. Why bother? An inexplicable voice suddenly sounded, and the next moment, scarlet energy suddenly burst out from Essen Stryker's eyes, forming a pair of strange scarlet eyes in midair. Just by looking at these eyes, you can feel I felt a sense of fear that came from the bottom of my heart, as if every part of my body was screaming in pain. William Stryker, I found you. A dam of huge amounts, the surrounding area is filled with boiling water, and the rumbling impact of the water completely covers all nearby sounds. Two figures came through the air and arrived above the dam. Looking at the dam below, Locke showed some interest, I know how to choose a place. A bright light appeared in White Queen's eyes, it's here. It's here. I feel it. Wait, no, why didn't she give me something back? Locke narrowed his eyes slightly, and the projection could feel the main body, but the main body could not feel it. It may be that it was completely restricted. It is more likely that the energy of the White Queen's main body has been weakened to a certain extent. Let's go, we may have to move faster. The two of them fell down and took a few steps forward. A door of huge amounts of alloy appeared in front of them. Just by the feeling of thickness and the cold metallic color, you could tell that this door was definitely not that heavy. However, Locke just stretched out a finger, clicked, click, click. This door, which weighed at least hundreds of tons, collapsed inch by inch. The gate completely collapsed, and what caught the eye was not a spacious passage, but rows of fully armed soldiers. Without any hesitation, rows of soldiers quickly launched attacks. Tongues of fire were erupting, and countless bullets were pouring down on Locke and White Queen. However, the bullets that erupted stopped only half a meter away from Locke, as if there was an invisible wave, shielding all the bullets half a meter away from Locke. Locke waved his hand casually, and all the bullets returned at a faster speed. Blood spattered everywhere, and each of the elite soldiers was pierced like tissue paper and fell to the ground. The two walked leisurely into the passage, and the rapid sirens continued to echo above. Groups of soldiers continued to gather from all directions, and then fell to the ground in rows. For Locke, no matter how many ordinary people besiege him, it means nothing. The combat power detector worn by Locke suddenly sounded a prompt. Combat power, 45. Rating, second rate on the surface. This combat power is considered to be mid-level among the second rate. He was a little interested, but only a little. The next moment, a slender figure appeared in Locke's sight. This is a woman whose age is hard to tell. She is not as plump and hot as the White Queen, and her expression is very cold. She does not look like a woman at all, but more like a cold killer or machine. Death girl, Locke raised his eyebrows. The guy who is known as the female version of Wolverine has the same super recovery ability and adamantium steel claws as Wolverine. Her strength is slightly inferior to Wolverine, but her sensitivity is higher. In short, she is a 50 to 50 equal to Wolverine. It has pretty good combat power. You can add Hellfire to add some background. Looking at it like this, with a snap of the fingers, Death Girl, who had already rushed forward like a female leopard, was instantly frozen in place. A chaos force escaped, easily capturing Death Girl's mind. Let's go on and see what kind of fun that guy can bring me. In the center of the base, looking at Locke who easily subdued Death Woman through the surveillance screen, William Stryker had a look of horror in his eyes. You know, with a configuration that is comparable to Wolverine, Death Girl can face any mutant except Professor X and Magneto. But now he was defeated with a snap of his fingers. Another monster-level mutant. The biggest card, Ice and Stryker, 
has been scrapped due to inexplicable reasons. The big card of death girl is also gone. William Stryker simply gritted his teeth and made a ruthless move. Someone, detonate the bomb on the dam. I want this monster to disappear together with this base. Are you out of cards? You really disappointed me, the sudden voice seemed to ring directly in my mind. Who? You're looking at it, William Stryker. William Stryker subconsciously looked up at the screen, and then saw Locke on the screen suddenly looking up at him. The next moment, William Stryker's eyes suddenly widened. Suddenly, Locke on the screen was glowing with a scarlet light, and then he actually walked out of the screen bit by bit. First the hands, then the body, and finally the whole body. Monster. Even William Stryker, who had seen countless mutant abilities, opened his eyes wide at this moment and murmured in fear and confusion. Looking at William Stryker, who had fallen into a state of confusion due to too much impact on the scene, Locke felt a little empty, and the opponent's body began to slowly burn. With another hook, a group of memories was abruptly pulled out of the opponent's brain. After excluding other messy and useless memories, all that was left was the information related to this base. Locke's eyes suddenly lit up, there is such an unexpected gain. The figure disappeared instantly, and when it reappeared, it had reappeared next to the White Queen. Let's go, I know where your body is. Your condition is better than I thought. The entire base is divided into several floors. The upper floor is the research institute, the middle floor is the residence of researchers and soldiers, and the bottom floor is where many, experimental materials, were located. Looking at the experimental subjects, who were like puppies and kittens in cages, the White Queen's face became increasingly ugly. That should kill him more times. Soon, the two came to the deepest room. This room was very large and empty. The whole room was pure white. There was not even a bed in the room, only a white table, and on the table, there was a human figure, of diamonds. Seeing this human-shaped diamond, White Queen instantly became excited. This is another ability of White Queen, diamondization. Without any hesitation, the projection of White Queen will rush into the main body. However, the White Queen's projection that hit it was bounced back by an inexplicable force. What's going on? White Queen looked confused. The projection is part of her power, and it can also be considered a part of her body, but now she can't integrate it. Locke glanced at the human-shaped diamond on the table and couldn't help but admired, as expected of you. Transform into a diamond, and then forcibly seal your own mind with powerful spiritual power, putting yourself into a double sleep state of body and mind. This can not only prevent those guys from doing anything to your body, but also avoid affecting your mind through spiritual means. Quote. The only problem is that even my own power can't be returned. So what should I do now? Locke smiled and said nothing, stretched out a finger, the scarlet energy lingered at the fingertips, and then stretched out a finger and submerged it into Diamond's body. The next moment, the diamond-shaped body was forcibly eliminated. Seeing this scene, the White Queen projection could no longer hold back and rushed into the body. This time, there was no power to stop her. One minute, two minutes, three minutes. I don't know how long it took, but the crouched White Queen suddenly opened her eyes. In an instant, a vast invisible spiritual power like a wave quickly spread crazily around her. Locke lightly touched the combat power detector, and it was clearly visible that the White Queen's combat power began to skyrocket. Combat power, 200,250,300. It doubled in the blink of an eye, and finally settled at minus 480. Locke smiled, this combat power should have surpassed Professor X. Definitely, it's just normal. Professor. As the surge of spiritual power gradually stabilized, the light in the White Queen's eyes slowly dissipated, and the slightly dazed gaze began to regain its luster. The memory is integrated. Before Locke finished speaking, a figure jumped up and threw himself into Locke's arms. What followed was an extremely hot and wet kiss. Locke's hands also began to move, feeling the delicate body in his arms, of perfect curves. I have to say that this delicate body is even more beautiful than the previous projection. Seeing that White Queen's movements were getting louder and more emotional, Locke held her down. Emma, now is not the right time. So what? No one can stop us. White Queen's eyes were hot and emotional, and she was simply charming. Locke smiled and shook his head. Of course no one will stop it, but, Emma, if we delay it for a few more hours, your old buddy should go to see God. 
White Queen was stunned for a moment when she heard this, old man. He quickly came back to his senses, could it be that there are still former Hellfire members in this base? Locke smiled and said nothing. Who is it? Riptide? Or Red Devil? Locke still didn't answer, he just held White Queen's slender waist, and the two of them disappeared in an instant. When he reappeared, he had already appeared near a research platform. When the researchers around him saw the two people who suddenly appeared, they couldn't help but be stunned. In this moment, they were completely frozen in place, and then they were burned as if spontaneously burning. Drowning in scarlet flames. The White Queen paid no attention to the researchers, her eyes fell on the blood-red figure on the experimental table. The Red Devil is actually this guy. White Queen's expression was a little complicated, I didn't expect that this guy was also arrested. He was arrested by the same organization as me. The White Queen turned one hand into diamond, destroyed all the surrounding equipment, and put her spiritual power into the Red Devil's brain, intending to awaken the Red Devil's consciousness. During this process, Locke used a combat power detector to observe the Red Devil. Combat power, 78. Rating, second rate on the surface. This guy's fighting ability is higher than I thought. In my memory, this guy seems to only have the ability to teleport, but this guy's teleportation is for group movement. Obviously, if you want to move in a group, you must have a lot of energy in your body. If this guy learns some close combat, he will be an excellent assassin. While Locke was thinking, the Red Devil had slowly opened his eyes, and as his consciousness gradually awakened, White Queen. White Queen smiled slightly, you're awake, Red Devil, long time no see. White Queen, why did you save me? Didn't you disappear? I was indeed captured before, but now I have regained my freedom, and all this is because of my dear. White Queen looked at Locke, with undisguised love in her eyes. The Red Devil gave Locke a strange look. It's not like he, an immortal, didn't understand this kind of look. By the way, Red Devil, what happened to you? Didn't you follow Magneto? With his character, he should have saved you. The Red Devil suddenly fell into silence. Obviously, there were some secrets that could not be said directly. Looking at the Red Devil who didn't want to answer, the White Queen smiled inexplicably. Red Devil, it seems that following Magneto is not a satisfactory choice for you. Then, would you like to join us? You, Red Devil is an immortal, so he naturally understands what White Queen means. Yes, us, we will rebuild Hellfire. I am still the White Queen, and he will be our new Black King. The Red Devil did not respond, but looked at Locke silently. Locke spoke, do you think I'm not as good as Xiao? As an immortal species, the Red Devil is naturally not an idiot. He shook his head, I don't think so. It's just that the times now are different from those of our time. Although he didn't say it directly, there were still some doubts behind the words. After all, the original Black King Xiao was indeed very strong. Locke didn't care either, if that's the case, then you should see it with your own eyes. As soon as he finished speaking, Locke stretched out a finger and tapped the void lightly. In an instant, the raging chaos force suddenly spread out, pouring crazily around. Under the Red Devil's horrified gaze, the table, the equipment, everything disappeared, followed by the room, and outside the room. The Scarlet Chaos Force is like a torrent that has lost its valve, raging crazily and surging towards every corner. A few minutes later, everything in the entire base was reduced to nothing. The entire base has completely disappeared, and all the soldiers and researchers in the base have been wiped out. Only the individuals who were used as experimental subjects survived. This was like a miracle created by the gods, leaving the Red Devil speechless for a long time. When it comes to destructive power, it is not impossible for Black King Xiao, who absorbed nuclear energy at his peak, to be able to do it. However, between this effortless and casual attitude, and Black King Xiao's explosive display of power, you can tell who is stronger and who is weaker with just your toes. Not to mention, this person can automatically distinguish between friend and foe and kill all enemies without harming the children at all. This ability is like a miracle. Therefore, after only a moment of silence, the Red Devil slowly knelt down on one knee and offered the most noble courtesy. This ancient mutant offered his loyalty at this moment. Seeing this scene, a look of satisfaction appeared on Locke's face. The origin of the Red Devil is very unusual. 
He has lived for thousands of years, making him one of the oldest mutants in the world. Thousands of years have passed, and even if there is some lack of strength, the thousand years of experience can more than make up for it. More importantly, the Red Devil has experienced thousands of years of hard work, and his mental strength is much stronger than that of the average mutant. His 78 combat power is not because he can only reach 78, but because mutant has no clear path to become stronger. His ability can only develop to this point. Once he joined Hellfire and obtained the meditation technique, his speed in practicing meditation would definitely be much faster than others. This guy has the potential to step into the top ranks. White Queen looked at this scene with a smile. Red Devil, we can work together again. The Red Devil raised his head and glanced at the White Queen. White Queen, you seem to have changed a lot. White Queen nodded, as expected of you. You have lived for thousands of years. Although you have no spiritual ability, the spirit honed for thousands of years makes you more sensitive than ordinary mutants. I am indeed much stronger now than before. Oh, the Red Devil's eyes lit up. Then how strong are you now? How strong? White Queen said calmly, it's time to change the title of the world's number one spiritual master from Professor X. The Red Devil's eyes instantly shrank and he exclaimed in shock, you have surpassed Professor X. Although many mutants are disgusted with Professor X's character, no mutant will question the power of Professor. Who would have thought that White Queen, who has always been suppressed by Professor X, would actually surpass Professor X in speaking? How did you do that? The Red Devil said excitedly. Everyone is eager to become stronger, especially the mutant group, which advocates the pursuit of powerful power. White Queen did not respond, but glanced at Locke standing aside with eyes full of fascination. The Red Devil still didn't understand the reason, and suddenly looked at Locke excitedly, Boss, can you also make me stronger? Locke nodded and said calmly, Our new Hellfire does have a clear method for mutant to become stronger. If it reaches the extreme, it will be enough to rival mutant bipolar. And I will not hesitate to share these with the members of Hellfire. The Red Devil became more and more excited. The more a mutant like him has lived for a long time, the more he understands the natural barriers brought by mutant ability. If it doesn't work, it just won't work. If your ability is not strong enough, it will be useless no matter how hard you try. Even after a thousand years of hard work, he could only kneel down without any resistance in front of those new mutants with incredible abilities. So, without any hesitation, the Red Devil dropped to one knee again. Boss, please give me an order. Your order will be the direction of my future attacks. Already he admired Locke's power, and now he heard that Locke could make mutants stronger, the Red Devil's loyalty suddenly exploded, not to mention reaching the level of die-hard loyalty, but it was almost the same. Locke was very satisfied with the Red Devil's attitude and turned to glance aside, so, where are you two? The one Locke glanced at was Death Girl, who had been following Locke silently before. She looked like the most useful puppet, but in fact, with the blow that destroyed the base, Locke had already released Death Girl's control. What's the point of controlling a puppet? With Locke's strength, he can create creations that are no less than second rate at any time. What he wants is the true loyalty of these guys. After only a few seconds of silence, these dead women, who were as silent as icebergs, also knelt down on one knee, boss, Yuriko Koyama will be your sharpest knife. Yuriko Koyama, the death girl, was betrayed by her father, used as experimental material, and forcibly manipulated. Even her own consciousness was not her own. Her life was a tragedy. Now facing a being who could save her, restore her consciousness, and be incomparably powerful, and even make herself stronger, her surrender was almost without surprise. I don't like the name Yuriko Koyama. Locke said casually, for no other reason than that he didn't like those people who had a good life. Then I will be the death girl from now on. Locke nodded with satisfaction, and then looked at the last place. There was actually no one there. It looked like Locke was looking at a ball of air. What about you? Still unwilling to respond to me. Only the White Queen, who has powerful psychic power, can detect that there is a strange psychic power there. Silence, a long silence, a long time before any sound came out. I don't know, I'm confused. Locke was not surprised when he heard this. Even if the tragedy was like Death Girl, she was only betrayed by her father. The guy who just spoke was different. 
he was personally sent to the experimental platform by his own father. If tragedy could be divided into levels, this guy would definitely be at full level. Then just follow me first, watch slowly and think slowly. Good. The reason why Locke is so generous is naturally because this tragic child is different. Illusion Master Ison Stryker, son of William Stryker, this tragic and miserable guy is truly a top-notch person on the surface. Even if it's just a first class, first class is a first class, this guy is enough to be called the third strongest psychic master in mutant. The most important thing is that this third one is Professor X, because his ability is a psychic variant, five sense control. In the early morning, the slightly rising sun dispelled the darkness. The sunlight penetrated through the window and shone on an undulating quilt. The quilt was very ordinary, but what was extraordinary was the hot and delicate body that was holding up the quilt. Locke stood up wearing a bathrobe, his perfect abdominal muscles like marble sculptures were clearly on display. He walked to the balcony and sat on the sofa, letting the morning breeze blow gently on his face. One hand was spread out, and in the palm of the hand, there were groups of extremely complex scarlet lines swirling and surrounding each other, intertwining into a complex picture. The sliding door of the balcony behind him was pushed open, and the hot body that had been enjoyed in every possible way last night was pressed against Locke's back. I thought you would sleep a little longer. I'm really tired all over. My dear, you were as strong as a beast last night. Locke turned over and held the White Queen's hot body in his arms, enjoying the wonderful touch of this queen-like beauty. Honey, what are you doing? Locke's open hand continued to weave complex scarlet patterns, which aroused the White Queen's curiosity. I'm making a little thing. What? The emblem of the new Hellfire. Aren't you going to use playing cards? Locke smiled. Do you hope that the members of the new Hellfire will deliberately bring a playing card in order to identify themselves? White Queen looked at Locke's palm, so, you created a special kind of playing card. Forget it, let me show you and you will understand. Although it is only a semi-finished product now, it is still barely usable. As Locke finished speaking, light shone like a kaleidoscope in his palm. After a moment, the complex and intertwined patterns appeared as a whole, becoming something like a metal. It is about the same size as the badge hanging on the chest. On the surface, it looks like half a playing card. This one is the Jack of Spades. There is a deep red flame around the playing card, giving people a strange and coquettish feeling. It looks pretty good. This thing should be more than just appearance, right? Well, every Hellfire badge comes with its own owner recognition program. Once touched by someone other than the owner, the mental shock inside it will be triggered automatically. In addition, depending on the level, each badge also comes with different levels of crisis protection abilities, which can trigger a layer of protective cover at critical moments to protect the badge user. These two are just the basic abilities of the badge. Is there any further ability? Emma, you can try putting your psychic powers into it. Upon hearing this, White Queen put a ray of spiritual power into it, and instantly, a strange picture appeared in White Queen's sight. Current codename, Jack of Spades. Points, zero. Current authority, level 2. Permission store, not enabled. Is this? There was obvious surprise in White Queen's eyes. Needless to say the code name, points will be the internal currency of Hellfire in the future. Everyone who completes tasks or contributes to Hellfire can obtain certain points. With points, you can purchase various extraordinary items. For example, those extraordinary potions discovered by Tom. Knight's breathing technique, spiritual meditation technique, and so on. The permission store allows every Hellfire badge owner to know what items he or she has purchased based on the permission level, as well as the prices of the items, etc. White Queen took a deep breath. Dear, I have read the novels you prepared for Tom before. Is this the system mentioned in those works? Locke smiled and nodded. Yes, this is indeed equivalent to a low-level system. White Queen's eyes began to shine. My dear, you are simply a genius. After this thing is made, no matter how sincere or not, as long as it only requires one task to become stronger, the other party will absolutely obey the instructions. However, dear, the pricing, storage, etc. of goods must be strictly controlled. That will be our core foundation in the future. Locke gently pinched the White Queen's pretty nose and smiled slightly, you shouldn't tell me this. That's what you, the queen, should do in the future. 
The White Queen couldn't help but be stunned. The next moment, she leaned forward and gave her a passionate kiss. Obtaining these rights is almost equivalent to handing over the entire Hellfire to the White Queen. This kind of trust, even the original Black King would never be able to achieve. How could the White Queen not be moved by this? After a moment, a ray of silver was pulled away from each other, and the White Queen, whose charming eyes were almost dripping with water, shook her head. My dear, I'm touched by your faith in me, but it's not necessary. Absolute power, integrate breeds absolute ambition, and absolute arrogance. The release of tasks, the storage of extraordinary items, and the determination of the value of items. These three most core rights need to be separated. Even for me, it is best to only master one. Locke was noncommittal, but there was an inexplicable smile on the corner of his mouth, so, which one do you want? Any one is fine, dear, whichever one you think I'm suitable for. Locke fell into thinking about the release command, power, logistics, and pricing power. Logistics Locke had already had an idea. When Jerry's family arrived, they would be a family of file size, but each family would have unparalleled abilities. Who can be more suitable for logistics than them? As for the problem of rats stealing things, let them do it. A group of fist-sized rats can eat as much as they want. Of the remaining two, White Queen can actually be used. After thinking about it, Locke said, publish it, this one is more suitable for you. The White Queen's smile became more and more charming. Among the three rights, the release of tasks was obviously relatively larger, which was equivalent to the right to directly command all Hellfire members. Honey, what about the remaining two? Honey, you'd better think about it carefully. Locke nodded. I already have a goal to take charge of the storage of items, but it will take some time. As for the last thing, Locke's look couldn't help but reveal something strange. Pricing requires not only certain financial knowledge, but more importantly, the ability to clarify the true value of various items. To clarify the value, you first need to understand what it is. What role does it play? It even has the ability to analyze targets at any time. And if you want to do this, what is more suitable than the chaos force that is in charge of creation? Thinking like this, Locke couldn't help but raise his head and look in one direction. Speaking of which, it's time to solve her problem. In the Scarlet World, the light of chaos drowns everything and creates everything. This is a world belonging to chaos. In such a world, Wanda, who is young but has a hotter figure than an adult woman, sits curled up. Wanda was not afraid. The reason why she curled up was just because she saw something that made her feel a little uncomfortable. To be more precise, it was the figures in the sky that were almost the same as hers, looking at them, development and look at their future destiny. Without any exception, every woman who looks exactly like herself is doomed to tragedy. She is doomed to experience the death of her brother and the death of her husband. Such tragedies are repeated again and again, and in the end they become completely insane. Wanda is like watching a movie, watching a movie that makes her feel the same. Suddenly, strange ripples appeared not far away from Wanda. Wanda did not look back, but an undetectable smile appeared on her face. You are here. Locke appeared, walked forward, and sat side by side with Wanda. The relationship between the two seemed quite familiar. In fact, this is indeed the case. Since acquiring the Chaos Force, although he did not directly awaken Wanda, Locke has also begun to contact Wanda, and has been using his free time to enter Wanda's mental space to communicate with Wanda. This special chaos space in front of her can only be seen by Wanda because of Locke. In fact, normal Wanda cannot see or notice where this chaos space is. How is it? After reading each of Wanda's experiences, what do you think? Are those all true? It depends on your own perception. If you think it's true, it's true. If you don't want to believe it, it's just a story. That's really not a wonderful story, Wanda said in a complicated tone. Locke looked into the distance and suddenly frowned, where is the most powerful Scarlet Witch? The most powerful Super Scarlet Witch that Locke has ever seen before, to be honest, it shocked Locke. Now that he is stronger, Locke can more clearly understand how terrifying the opponent's strength is. The peak of Heavenly Father, the lowest is the peak of Heavenly Father. It is even possible that one has begun to transcend the father and come into contact with the level of the single universe. 
If he were not so powerful, he would not be able to detect the biggest secret of the Chaos Force and clarify the truth about the source of the Chaos Force with his own strength. Hearing this, Wanda suddenly smiled strangely. She, she went to find someone. She is very determined, she must find someone. Locke couldn't help but frown. He naturally understood who the most powerful Super Scarlet Witch wanted to find and what his purpose was. A Scarlet Witch who is at least at the peak of Heavenly Father, or even stronger, but is beautiful and hot, and is dedicated to searching for herself. This would probably be a bit exciting to others, but Locke didn't. He was very repelled by this. Unlike Locke himself and Wanda next to him, the Super Scarlet Witch is obviously close to being, pregnant, and mature. For Sithorn, the god of black magic, it is already a super meal that is almost completed. With the help of Tom's power, it doesn't matter if you cut off your relationship with the Source of Chaos, or even if you add Wanda beside you, but that Super Scarlet Witch is different. You can use your toes to know the difference between a seed that has just begun to develop and a super meal that is about to be completed. Locke and Tom dared to act this second, and Sithorn dared to come down and chat with Locke the next second. Locke was crazy to face a multi-dimensional existence because of a guy he didn't know at all. Locke shook his head, don't think about that for the time being. Whether the Super Scarlet Witch can find him is still unknown. The number of parallel worlds in the Marvel world is currently 199,999, which is more than 190,000 parallel universes. This is still known, only the unknown ghosts know how many there are. So, Wanda, are you going to rely on your own strength to go on, or are you going to let me help you cut off your own destiny? Wanda smiled lightly, I'll excuse you then. I thought you would hesitate. After all, cutting off your destiny also means saying goodbye to something destined by fate. Destined thing, are you talking about my future, husband? To be honest, I don't have much expectations for a robot husband. Besides, Wanda glanced at Locke from the corner of her eye. Locke naturally noticed Wanda's little movements, and a smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. There is a semi-conspiracy theory in the past life. The reason why Wanda fell in love with Vision is because Wanda's own power was awakened by the stimulation of the Mind Gem, and Vision was also spawned by the Mind Gem. There will be a strange attraction between them. Otherwise, how could Wanda fall in love with a robot when there are so many superheroes around her? It is precisely because she fell in love with a robot, a special life form that did not understand love in the first place and was incomplete, that all her emotions had a wrong sustenance, which triggered a series of tragedies behind Wanda. Now, Vision has not yet been born, and the tragic future is conflicted by Wanda. In comparison, Locke, who is more than superior in every aspect and has the same power as himself, is more attractive than Vision. No. In that case, Tom. Meow, Tom rubbed his hazy sleepy eyes and appeared next to Locke. Tom, please trouble me again and chew up the connections around here. Tom nodded, jumped up very skillfully, and nodded at the surrounding scarlet light beams like a radish. Soon, in just a few breaths, the scarlet light pillars around him were chewed up, and the surrounding space began to collapse. One second, two seconds. I don't know how long it took, but Wanda, who seemed to be going through a long sleep, slowly opened her eyes. Some unfamiliar light made Wanda's eyes feel a little uncomfortable. As time passed, her vision gradually became clearer, and a familiar yet unfamiliar figure appeared in her sight. Under the warm light, a handsome man holding a cat showed a gentle smile. Wanda, everything new, welcome. At the top of a huge building complex, Locke looked down. This was the uppermost level of the Hydra base. From this angle, he could overlook the entire base. Following Locke is not the White Queen who usually stays close by, but the newborn Wanda. Wanda looked down at the Hydra base, which was completely different from what she remembered. It no longer felt cold and had a lot more popularity. More importantly, the entire base was filled with powerful auras. Locke never hesitates to reward his subordinates, such as, Knight's breathing technique, Apprentice. At the moment, almost everyone in the Hydra base has a copy of this relatively basic technique. Even if not everyone can become an apprentice in a few days like Locke and Frank, today's base soldiers have also made great progress in strength, and there are not a few who have officially reached the third-rate level on the surface. Suddenly, Wanda looked in a direction with some astonishment. 
There was a group of base soldiers who were training. Among them, there was a person Wanda knew very well. He was her own brother. Can Pietro come too? Definitely, I don't mind that every warrior who belongs to me becomes stronger. I even look forward to them becoming stronger. Pietro's qualifications are not bad. He is one of the few warriors in this group who has truly become a knight's apprentice. To say that he has exceptional ability is not an exaggeration. A soft smile appeared on Wanda's face, that's great. She likes the current Hydra base, no, it should be said to be the new Hellfire base. The atmosphere is very good, everyone is getting stronger, there is no chaos, and everyone is living a good life. However, when she thought of what she had seen in her memory, Wanda's face couldn't help but look a little more complicated. A hand suddenly placed on her head and slightly rubbed her golden hair, I must be thinking about Pietro's death in the future. Don't worry about that, not to mention that you have cut off your own destiny. Pietro himself has now become an apprentice. He has also undergone professional combat training. Both his strength and combat quality have been greatly improved. There will never be another death as funny as what you saw. If a speedster dies from a bullet, other speedsters will laugh to death if they see this. Wanda's face turned slightly red, but she did not break away from the warm hand on her head. I remember that all real members of the new Hellfire will be able to obtain the badges given by you. Want to know how I arrange things between you and Pietro? Yeah, Wanda nodded. After thinking for a moment, Locke said, I can leave AJ card for Pietro, but he is still far from good now. Even if the speed power in his body is activated, he is still far from qualified. Wanda did not object her question, but instead said with some curiosity, J Brand, I remember you said that the middle management of Hellfire is above the digital badges, and the requirements should be very high. What are the specifics? You should know about Hellfire's combat power detector. Wanda nodded. According to my customized regulations, if you want to obtain a digital badge, the minimum combat power requirement must be more than 10. The J card is the first level of management and belongs to the second level Hellfire authority holder. If you want to be worthy of the J card, the minimum the combat power requirement is 60. With a combat power of 60, it is already considered a relatively strong second rate force on the surface. It is a combat power that cannot be underestimated anywhere. Only with this level of combat power can it not lose the face of Hellfire when dispatched abroad. 60, then Pietro is really far behind. Wanda, whose vision has surpassed that of ordinary people, clearly understands the concept of 60 combat effectiveness. The minimum combat power requirement for J card is 60, the minimum combat power requirement for Q card is 70, and the minimum combat power requirement for K card is 80. Above that, the real lineup of Hellfire, the four generals of Hellfire, the minimum combat power must exceed 100. Wanda nodded in understanding, so, your arrangement for me is to be one of the four generals. Locke smiled and moved slightly closer to Wanda's small earlobe. The general is the strongest warrior of Hellfire. My expectations for you have never been that of a warrior. Wanda blushed instantly, not because Locke was too close, but because she understood the hidden meaning in Locke's words. I, I'm going to see Pietro first, after saying that, Wanda, whose face was red, disappeared in a flash. Looking at Wanda hurriedly leaving, the corners of Locke's mouth curled up slightly. In Hellfire, there can only be one king, but there is not only one queen of Hellfire. Then I wonder, am I qualified to be a general? Sir. An inexplicable voice sounded from Locke's ears, and he looked around but couldn't see anyone. Locke did not look back, nor was he surprised at the voice. He just said, it seems that you have completely adapted to life here, Ison. Please call me master of illusion, sir. Locke nodded. It is understandable that no matter who is put on the experimental platform by his father, he will have some stress reactions. Besides, yes, sir, life here is wonderful. There is no discrimination, no human experimentation, and you, the leader who never discriminates against mutants, this is a paradise for mutants. I'm glad you changed your mind. This thing should have been yours a long time ago, as he said that, an object appeared on Locke's fingertips, and he tossed it casually, shooting off in a certain direction. A hand reached out of thin air and grabbed the flaming badge, the ace of clubs. There was obvious excitement on Master of Illusion's face. 
Ever since his perverted father discovered his ability, Master of Illusion has lived a miserable life. Not to mention fatherly love, he doesn't even have basic human rights. Therefore, even though he possesses truly top-notch combat power, Master of Illusion also suffers from severe lack of confidence and isolation. For others, this badge is a symbol of status, but for the Master of Illusion, it is recognition. It is recognition of the value of his existence. This is what makes him happy and excited. A. Suddenly, Locke let out a cry of surprise. What happened? Sir. Locke smiled lightly, it's a good thing if something happens. One of your future companions is about to show up, do you want to go and have a look? If that's what you mean, definitely, and I'm looking forward to it too. At a university in New York, it was the end of get out of class at the moment. College students in twos and threes, symbolizing youth and vitality, left the school. Among them, there was a woman who was obviously much older than the others. She was holding a few books and was alone. After walking out of school, she looked much more mature than other students. She looked less like a student and more like a teacher. With the appearance of this elderly lady, a guy dressed like a beggar was carefully peeking out from a corner where no one noticed. At the moment, not far away, in a quiet bar called Time and Love Coffee Bar, a group of people were watching here with interest, or more accurately, watching the beggar. Wanda was sitting next to Locke, holding a blue cat, looking at the beggar with interest. Is that guy the warrior you chose? It seems that the situation is not good. The master of illusion, who stood aside like an elegant attendant, also looked at the beggar with expectation and exploration. I can vaguely feel that there seems to be an extremely violent force hidden in that guy's body. He is fierce and violent, like a beast. Hearing the illusion master's comments, Locke took a sip of coffee. It's not as simple as beast. The term ferocious beast is more appropriate. The master of illusion's expression changed. Beast is just a ferocious animal, but a ferocious beast is far beyond the level of an animal. It was evaluated by the gentleman as a ferocious beast. It must be said that at this moment, the master of illusion became quite interested in the beggar. Wanda, who was holding Tom in her arms, looked thoughtful when she heard this. Through her experience in the chaos space, she had a far better understanding of many things than others. A human body with a beast hidden inside it, and she seemed to know who it was. Is the warrior you chose Hulk? Locke nodded, then shook his head. It's Hulk, but not the Hulk you know. What I see is the real Hulk with all the impurities removed, the ultimate warrior with Mephista potential. Mephista potential. The master of illusion instantly shrank his eyes and looked at the beggar in the distance, filled with disbelief. Is that beggar-like guy that strong? Even Wanda was stunned. Mephista, is Hulk that strong? What Wanda comes into contact with through the chaos space is only what other Wanda has experienced. The Hulk who officially came into contact with Wanda was already the Hulk who had begun to integrate, the Hulk who had begun to weaken. Later, he was even beaten to the point of autism by a set of military punches by Thanos. In Wanda's perception, such a Hulk is strong. Strong, but just like that, it doesn't live up to Mephista's evaluation at all. Locke laughed and said nothing. Outsiders who have not been exposed to the craziest version of Hulk will never understand the true potential of Hulk. It is said that the Hulk's power will continue to grow stronger with anger. Locke does not deny that the Hulk has this trait, but in Locke's view, this is actually the process of the Hulk constantly exploding his potential. Take a good look at what's next. Not long after, this guy will be at his peak in a certain sense. The elderly lady had already left in the car, and the beggar was secretly following her. Behind her, there was a group of people watching the show with great interest. The car slowly stopped with the sound of stalling, and the elderly lady was about to get out of the car, when suddenly. Ouch! A terrifying beast roar suddenly sounded. The lady who had already opened the car door trembled all over, how could such a sound be possible? How could there be a wolf in the city? Acting on instinctive caution, the woman returned to the car. The next moment, an unknown giant beast that looks like a wolf but not a wolf, and looks like a dog but not a dog rushes out of the forest. This giant beast does not even look much smaller than a car. Its teeth are extremely ferocious, as if it can be swallowed in one bite. Swallow a human being. Roaring, roaring, and slamming into the car where the lady was. Boom. The entire car was knocked several meters away, and the woman's frightened screams pierced the night. 
Betty. A rage, crazy roar suddenly exploded. The beggar's tattered clothes were instantly swelled to pieces, and a terrifying green giant rose from the ground. Roar. A roar like that of an ancient ferocious beast, more terrifying than thunder, forcibly frightened the giant beast to the spot. The hulk took more than ten meters with one step, and rushed in front of the giant beast in a few steps. With huge amounts of fists, mixed with endless rage and anger, he punched out and hit the giant beast hard on the head, carrying the terrifying power. The giant beast's head slammed to the ground. Boom. There was a muffled sound on the ground, and the surrounding ground instantly sank half a meter deep. Terrifying power poured out, shaking the ground within dozens of meters around and causing countless terrifying cracks. Hiss. The master of illusion took a deep breath when he saw this scene. This violent and savage burst of pure power had to be said to be somewhat restraining him. Because of that, father, the master of illusion had also come into contact with some mutants. However, even the most powerful mutant in his memory, facing such a violent and ferocious force, it is far inferior. Locke, on the side, watched this scene with interest. This situation is somewhat like the plot of Hulk 1, but Hulk 1 is an independent plot and cannot connect the entire Avengers alliance. This world is a comprehensive Marvel world, so it is some kind of variant plot. If it is a variant plot, then something very interesting may happen next. The fierce Hulk killed a giant beast with one punch. However, before he could take a breath, another terrifying giant beast rushed out of the surrounding forest. In an instant, the Hulk was surrounded by giant beasts. A war is about to break out. Wanda, who was holding Tom, watched this scene with interest, those giant beasts are so strange. Are there such strange species in reality? It's just some experimental subjects. There is an incomplete super soldier serum in the army. The side effects are very serious and ordinary people cannot use it. Beasts have a stronger tolerance than humans. Boom. Boom. Ouch. The battle in the distance broke out instantly. The violent Hulk used unparalleled power to instantly crush a group of ferocious beasts. Each of the terrifying ferocious beasts was either punched in the head by the Hulk, or violently torn into two by the Hulk. Half, like a ferocious beast, the ferocious power is fully displayed at this moment. The Hulk, who had defeated several ferocious beasts in just a few breaths, walked towards Betty Ross step by step with smelly blood all over his body. Suddenly, a clear and sweet female voice sounded. Mr. Big, please stop right now, please. You scared that lady. This sudden sound caused the Hulk to stop. Locke, who had been watching the show, was also moved by his expression and raised his head suddenly. Then, on a tall building not far away, there was a spider-like figure lying on the floor. Every woman around Locke has a bulging figure and good looks. But among them, everyone has their own characteristics, such as White Queen, who has a perfect golden body ratio, Wanda, who stands out from the rest of the female population for her plumpness, not to mention Natasha Romanoff, whose enchanting sense of charm is very much like the legendary succubus. The one in front of me is also unique, with a round shape like a peach. A seductive little Spider-Man, Locke's lips curled up slightly, making no secret that he was very interested in this little Spider-Man. After all, what man can resist a truly Spider-Man? At the moment, Spider-Woman, who was lying on the building and watching the Hulk below with vigilance, suddenly felt an inexplicable feeling and looked around in confusion. This feeling is very strange, as if being stared at by some terrifying existence, even scarier than the big guy below, but it is not malicious at all, it is very strange. After feeling it for a while, Spider-Woman turned her head back, and the feeling disappeared again. Maybe there was something wrong with spider telepathy. After all, something scarier than the big guy below may not exist at all. This is a monster that, as long as you look at it with your eyes, the spider telepathy in your body has reached its extreme, even causing her spider genes to involuntarily send out trembling signals. If it weren't for the drive of justice, she would even want to turn around and run away. The Hulk only paused for a few seconds, then ignored Spider-Woman and continued walking towards Betty. It seemed that for him, nothing in the world could attract his attention more than Betty. Don't come near the big guy again, I'll be rude to you if you come near me again. The Hulk ignored Spider-Woman at all. Spider-Woman couldn't wait any longer. She needed to keep the lady safe. As soon as he raised his head, the spider-white cobweb shot out, overwhelming the Hulk. 
However, facing this super cobweb that was enough to trap most living things, the Hulk just snorted and violently tore it apart. The next moment, a big tree was pulled up out of thin air and hit the Hulk hard, but was smashed into pieces by the Hulk's punch out of thin air. At this moment, the Hulk seemed to be really annoyed by Spider-Woman. He temporarily gave up taking Betty away and prepared to destroy this annoying little Spider-Man first. Spider-Woman spider telepathy instantly reached its peak, and without thinking, she grabbed Cobweb and began to swing away from the building. Boom, boom, boom. A car was pulled up out of thin air and slammed into the wandering Spider-Woman. The speed was terrifying, and the power was even more terrifying. Some shot up into the sky, and some rubbed against Spider-Woman's sides and were embedded in the building. Spider-Woman was so shocked that her whole body was filled with excitement. What a terrible monster. For a moment, she didn't even have the strength to fight back and could only run away in embarrassment. Suddenly, a dazzling light flew from the sky and hit the Hulk hard, knocking the Hulk back a few steps and giving Spider-Woman some breathing space. Let me see, a big green monster bullying a little Spider-Man. Have I been kidnapped by those fools for a few years? This world is getting weirder and weirder. With constant complaints, Iron Man, who was all red and red, landed on the ground in a classic half-kneeling posture. The Hulk doesn't care what the other party says, he attacks himself, the enemy. No need for nonsense, the Hulk goes straight to Iron Man and it's a stem. Boom. The location where Iron Man was was smashed into pieces by the Hulk, and the ground seemed to have been plowed. Iron Man couldn't help but smacked his lips as he flew up, what a monster. The impact is comparable to some missiles. He couldn't help but glance at Spider-Woman not far away. Hi, Miss Spider, I think it's time for us to join forces. The two superheroes instantly reached a tacit understanding and began to join forces to fight against the enemy. However, there is no meaning. Under the absolute power and absolute defense, any bells and whistles are meaningless. The attacks of Iron Man and Spider-Woman cannot bring any harm to the Hulk, and the Hulk's attack only needs once, they can be defeated directly. The two superheroes could only rely on fighting to temporarily hold off the Hulk. Even this, there had been countless dangers. Not only that, with the Hulk's increasingly angry rage attacks, the entire street has been completely destroyed and destroyed, and it looks like it will continue to expand. Unfortunately, Iron Man and Spider-Woman are completely unable to stop this expansion. Finally, with a rumbling sound, tanks and vehicles appeared on the battlefield, groups of fully armed soldiers appeared out of thin air, and military fighter jets also appeared in the sky. In the blink of an eye, the entire battlefield was completely surrounded by troops. Seeing this scene, Spider-Woman couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. The violent Hulk was so terrifying that she felt like she had brushed against death at least dozens of times today. Now that the army is here, it should be over, right? The Hulk looked around, those familiar hot weapons, and suddenly the memory of being chased several times hit his head, plus the annoying interruptions from the two, Bugs, Spider-Woman and Iron Man, and the fact that they prevented him from seeing Betty. The hatred, new and old hatreds are piled up one after another, this can be tolerated. Roar. The Hulk looked up to the sky and let out a beast-like roar of rage. The entire body seemed to expand in an instant. At the same time, an increasingly terrifying momentum swept around, and the ground seemed to be collapsing. At this moment, the Hulk was like a green terrifying Mephista. Rage's Hulk took the lead in launching an attack. At this moment, he wanted to defeat all these annoying enemies with his own strength. In a corner, a group of people watching the show, the master of illusion, looked at the constantly beating combat power detector and couldn't help but click his tongue. The combat power is 200, 210, 200. It has reached 300 in a blink of an eye. This is not stopping. What a monster. Wanda also exclaimed in admiration, this is much scarier than what I remembered. Maybe, I can really grow into a Mephista. The army, plus the siege of two superheroes, should theoretically be a one-sided battle and the result was indeed one-sided, but it wasn't the Hulk who was one-sided, but the army and the two superheroes who were crushed by the Hulk. Countless bullets poured out, without causing any harm to the Hulk. With just a random blow, at least dozens of soldiers returned to the west. They casually knocked down fighter jets in the sky, overturned tanks when encountering them, and even turned tanks upside down to use as weapons. 
The unrivaled power brought by absolute power is undoubtedly evident at this moment. It's only a matter of time before the Hulk completely defeats the entire army. Maybe both superheroes will be smashed to death by him on the spot. Suddenly, thumb, thumb, thumb. It was unhurried, like the sound of fingers tapping on the table, echoing throughout the battlefield. It was obviously not a special sound, nor was it loud, but it was clearly transmitted to everyone's ears. At the same time, inexplicably, everyone's movements stopped, including at the moment like Rage Mephista. The Hulk. Click. There was a sound of the door being opened, which somehow attracted everyone's attention. The door was pushed open, and a young man in formal attire walked out and leaned over to perform an elegant ceremony. Everyone, this is enough for now. By your order, sir, please put an end to this farce. Looking at the extremely elegant master of illusion outside, Wanda was a little surprised, has he always been so elegant? Hearing this, Locke shook his head slightly, elegant, he is never elegant. Master of illusion, his past was very pathetic, and even the value of his existence was denied by his father. Later, I rescued him, gave him freedom, and gave him a new value of existence. In order to repay this recognition, he personally distorted own will. Loneliness, low self-esteem, coupled with the desire to fully repay me and complete the task perfectly, the result of this distortion is the gentlemanly behavior you see. Twisting your own will, can this kind of thing be done? Wanda couldn't help but widen her eyes. Others can't do it, but he can, because he is the master of illusion, the controller of the five senses. Whatever he sees, what his mouth says, what his nose hears, what his ears hear, and what his mind thinks, these five senses will be affected by what he does. Take control, including himself. At this moment, Wanda deeply understood what a hellfire general was. The outside world is accompanied by the elegant voice of the master of illusion. Iron Man, who was relatively arrogant, couldn't stand it first, let me see where this little baby comes from. It's so naive that it makes me laugh. When the master of illusion heard this, he was not angry. Mr. Iron Man, this is not naivety, but a sincere desire. This Mr. Hulk is the source of everything. Just let me take him away and this farce can end completely. Impossible. The Hulk didn't even react, and General Ross, who had been hiding, exploded instantly. The Hulk is the property of the military. No one can take him away, even to start a war. Following General Ross's angry scolding, the remaining soldiers around him all pointed their guns at the Master of Illusion, and tanks and aircraft also started to move simultaneously. Iron Man's expression changed instantly. He just didn't like Master Illusion's tone, but that didn't mean he would just watch Master Illusion being killed. Without saying a word, he would step over to protect Master Illusion. However, before Iron Man could fully take action, the Master of Illusion spoke and he shook his head. It's okay to treat me however you want, but I can't let you disturb the dinner between Mr. and Madam. At the same time, a bright spiritual light lit up in his eyes. In an instant, a vast spiritual field spread to the scene. In an instant, every soldier raised his gun uncontrollably and pointed it at himself with the gun in his hand, head. Even Iron Man, who was originally preparing to rescue, pointed the hand cannon at his temple uncontrollably. Sorry, I don't want to embarrass you. With that said, the Master of Illusion walked up to the Hulk and said something elegantly. Mr. Hulk, if you want to completely break away from your current body, completely separate from Mr. Bruce Banner, and each be free, then please leave with me. The Hulk swallowed his saliva. On the one hand, the giant fat man was strong, but he had never faced off against a psychic master. With this incredible ability, even the impulsive and irritable Hulk couldn't help but feel a little wary. Besides, I have to say that he was tempted. Bruce Banner hates Hulk. Hulk, doesn't Hulk hate Bruce Banner who has been trying to kill him since his birth? Hulk's heart was moved, and Bruce Banner's heart was moved even more. Therefore, the two instantly reached an unprecedented tacit understanding and followed the Master of Illusion honestly. When the Master of Illusion brought Hulk into the restaurant behind him, everyone present who was temporarily controlled by the Master of Illusion regained their ability to control themselves. After this recovery, General Ross was the first to go crazy, rush in and get the Hulk back. He's up there, no one can take the Hulk away before his eyes, no one. 
However, before the soldiers could get close to the restaurant, the restaurant disappeared bit by bit in full view of everyone. In just a few breaths, it completely disappeared from everyone's eyes, as if it had never appeared before. At this time, Iron Man, who had also recovered, couldn't help but said, Fake, J-A-R-V-I-S, what kind of ability is this? The cold artificial intelligence voice replied, Sir, your brain just experienced abnormal fluctuations. It should be that someone forcibly took over your brain temporarily and used your brain to perform the actions just now. As for the latter one, it cannot be parsed or understood. Iron Man was stunned. Fake, fake, how many years have I been kidnapped? Before he was kidnapped, it was a relatively serious crime to shoot at police officers with several guns. But now, he is facing off against the green giant of the army on his own. The mysterious man who instantly controls thousands of people on the field and takes over the brains of thousands of people. And that inexplicable disappearance, what the hell is that? Illusion. The question is, what about the few people who walked in? The green monster that almost blew him up on the spot and destroyed several streets was absolutely impossible to be an illusion. Are all today's criminals so unscientific? Sir, you have been kidnapped for one month and seven days. Fake, J-A-R-V-I-S, shut up. I don't want to know this. New York is really getting stranger and stranger now. I doubt I'll be surprised if aliens invade Earth in a few days. The cursed Iron Man soared into the sky. He needed to improve his mecha. Everything about him was like a toilet for others to use. He had never felt so insecure. When the Hulk entered the restaurant, his eyes instantly fell on the handsome young man not far away who was looking at him with a smile. In an instant, the Hulk's whole body stiffened. Monster. Even the master of illusion who controlled thousands of people in an instant, to the Hulk, is just a weirdo with strange abilities. He is a little afraid, but not afraid. The Hulk is never afraid. But at this moment, Hulk, for the first time in his life, felt uneasy. Although he was a human being, he felt as if there was a terrible, incomprehensible existence looking down at him. At this moment, the Hulk couldn't help but want to retreat and leave. This person gave him the feeling that General Beerus was countless times more dangerous than the mysterious people around him combined. However, the Hulk, who was immersed in uneasiness, did not notice that a blue cat appeared behind him at some point and seemed to be closing the door. The door was already closed. When Tom came back to his senses, his vision suddenly went dark. Bah! Without checking, a Tom was trampled into a puddle of Tom with one kick. At this point, the Hulk didn't feel anything yet and was still retreating. Why bother? It's time for us to go back. As Locke finished speaking, the retreating Hulk instantly lost control of his body. At the same time, everything, everything around him, began to slowly disappear. Tom is very angry. An angry cat was in a corner, its eyes constantly looking in a certain direction, not hiding its hostility at all. Not far away, the Hulk, who was over three meters tall, sat obediently on a pony. Well behaved. JPG. Realizing that eyes were constantly falling on him, the Hulk subconsciously turned his head and saw that it was a cat, and a smile, ferocious, suddenly appeared on his big face. Brush. The hair on Tom's body exploded instantly. Threatening. This is intimidation. This big green monster is terrorizing Tom. Tom swooped into Locke's arms. The cat was unwilling to come out of Locke's arms. Locke looked a little weird and said, Okay, Tom, Hulk is not targeting you. He is just smiling at you. Crack. With a sound, Tom was completely petrified. It was not an exaggeration, but Tom was really petrified. With a constant clicking sound, the whole Tom was shattered into pieces on the ground. The next moment, a hand appeared out of thin air, took out a broom from nowhere, brushed it a few times, and swept itself into a ball, automatically splicing into a new Tom. Hulk. This outrageous operation made even the green fat man look confused. What's even more outrageous is that the Hulk is still confused. Bruce Banner, who is temporarily suppressed in the body, has gone crazy. Fake, this is unscientific. Bruce Banner, who holds seven doctorate degrees at the same time, saw this unscientific scene. The three corpses jumped on the spot. For a moment, they actually suppressed Hulk's suppressed consciousness and transformed into Bruce Banner in human form again. Banner. Bruce Banner, who had recovered his human body, stared at Tom. At this moment, 
Dr. Banner's views were violent, and he was frantically using his own scientific views. This look was a little scary, causing Tom to shrink his neck and carefully shrink back behind Locke. Threatening. This is definitely intimidation. He's threatening Tom. Tom, the cat behind Locke, jumped up and down in anger. He wanted to give the other party a good beating, but thinking about the big man after his transformation, Tom couldn't help but swallow his saliva. Suddenly, Tom seemed to have thought of something and left angrily. When he left, he also took away a dumbbell that someone didn't know who had thrown it in the corner. Looking at Tom's leaving figure, Locke shook his head. Tom was defiant, but he retained the rich emotions of a cat and always did things that made people laugh or cry. Fortunately, Locke didn't mind these things and let him go. Bar. His eyes returned to Bruce Banner, Dr. Bruce Banner. Bruce Banner took a deep breath. Sir, you can just call me Dr. Banner. Locke nodded. Dr. Banner, do you want to completely separate from the Hulk in your body? Bruce Banner's eyes lit up instantly. If possible, I definitely want to completely get rid of it almost every moment of every day. To me, it is a monster. Hulk is not a monster. Half of Bruce Banner's face instantly shaped shifted, revealing the Hulk's big face, and roared rage at Bruce Banner. Bruce Banner looked solemn and spat at him without fear. Hulk, you are a monster, a monster created by me. You only have fighting and madness in your mind. Your existence will only cause destruction. You shouldn't do it at all appear in this world. Hulk is not a monster. Hulk became more and more angry, and even his whole body couldn't help but transform. Hulk, you don't need to be so excited. Locke's voice sounded. It was such a plain sentence, as if it had some kind of magic power, and it actually forced Hulk back when he was about to transform. Looking at Bruce Banner who had regained his human form, Locke's desire to communicate suddenly became much weaker. Dr. Banner, you originally wanted to talk to you about Hulk's true origin. After all, under certain circumstances, you can actually be regarded as his father. Now that doesn't mean much. The origin of Hulk. Bruce Banner looked confused. Didn't it mutate and form lesions after I was exposed to gamma rays? Yes or no, it is indeed a mutation, but it is even more of a miracle. Dr. Banner, the existence of Hulk is a miracle that you, a doctor of seven disciplines, cannot understand in your entire life. Bruce Banner was a little unhappy for a moment. He felt that his scientific literacy had been questioned. Snapped. A snap of fingers. Bruce Banner's body was shaken, and his entire soul was shaken out of his body in an instant. Bruce Banner, floating in midair, stared blankly down at his self, as if he had fallen into a deep sleep. The scientific values that he had always had were once again impacted. This is, a soul. Locke nodded, and with a flick of his hand, a plain mirror appeared on the side of Bruce Banner's soul. Bruce Banner looked over subconsciously, and his eyes were filled with confusion and shock. One soul, two appearances, it's him, and on the other side, it's the Hulk. Hulk. Dot has a soul. Bruce Banner murmured in shock. He always thought that Hulk was a disease, a monster hidden in his body, but he never thought that Hulk actually had his own soul. Having a soul means that it is a real life. Hulk is equivalent to a real life that coexists with him. Locke didn't answer Bruce Banner's question. He didn't need to answer it. It wasn't a question at all. To separate you and Hulk, we need some means and some preparations. You can stay here temporarily during this period. Bruce Banner nodded with a heavy face, his mood was lower than ever. Locke turned to leave with a sneer on his lips. He originally thought that Hulk and Banner were actually a pair of arrogant brothers who disliked each other. If not, Hulk would not be willing to completely integrate with Bruce Banner, so he put his mind to it and chose to chat with Bruce Banner. As a result, he now discovered that this was not the case at all. The disappearance of Hulk in the later period was more likely due to his immature worldview being eroded by Bruce Banner's adult worldview. In the end, he was tamed in ignorance and completely handed over to himself. Bruce Banner. As for the current Hulk, he is still in a wild and untamed state, and there is actually no need to talk about it at all. Bruce Banner has always believed that Hulk was a disease, so he disliked the conflict. Although Hulk was refuting, but with his immature thinking, he might not believe it at all. Now, the answer to the mystery has been revealed by Locke. Hulk is not what Bruce Banner imagined. 
The long-standing grievances have completely exploded, and Hulk will want to leave the other party more than Bruce Banner. Locke sat cross-legged in a secret room. In the void, there were high purity crystals that had been harvested from the world of, super out of control. At the moment, one seventeenth or eighteenth of the crystals had been consumed. Locke casually scratched off a piece as big as his fist with one finger. Looking at the fist-sized crystal floating in front of him, Locke's eyes filled with intense eagerness. He has already felt that he has reached the true limit of the first-class surface, and even the bottleneck of that layer is invisible but can be clearly perceived, and only a trace of it has been broken. With just this piece, this last piece, his chaos force can instantly break through that layer of barriers and step into the realm called Sub-Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, even if you look at this universe, you can be called the real overlord. What's more, the Yadian father who has broken through the three ancient powers will have a stronger fighting power than those who are looking for Yadian father. Even if he faces those weaker heavenly fathers, he will not be unable to fight. Locke took a deep breath, but did not immediately choose to break through. Instead, he waved his hand and took out another object, which was the tesseract that the ancient one personally sent to him. A ball of chaos force surged out and began to shock the surface of the tesseract. Gradually, some of the space power originating from the tesseract peeled off from the tesseract. With the help of chaos force, Locke began to control the power of the peeled off space. In an instant, the surrounding space continued to twist, forming layers of space barriers. After most of a day's work, the entire secret room has been filled with the power of circles of space. Through constant space superposition, a small world has been created. Seeing this scene, Locke breathed a sigh of relief, picked up the prepared high purity realm, and prepared to break through the realm. He couldn't help but be cautious. In the Marvel world, Yatianfu, who had clearly broken through through his own efforts, was just an awakening Thor in Locke's mind. Others, either because of their racial characteristics or because they were born gods, naturally became the only awakening Thor. At the moment of awakening, he made quite a commotion. Hela and level godfather were all blown away. So no one knows how much noise Locke will make with this breakthrough. Wisps of chaos force overflowed, wrapping up the fist-sized high purity crystal layer by layer, and began to skillfully refine and absorb the high purity crystal. Time began to pass slowly. I don't know how long it's been. Boom. A deep and powerful heartbeat sounded. Then came the second and third sounds. The sound of the heart beating became more and more frequent and louder. In the blink of an eye, it was like the roar of thunder and lightning. At a certain moment, Locke suddenly opened his eyes. In an instant, a scarlet light rose into the sky, as if it turned into a pillar of light reaching the sky. At the same time, the terrifying chaos force began to completely erupt. Boom, boom, boom. The violent chaos force turned into a terrifying chaos torrent spreading crazily around, mercilessly destroying everything within the range. In an instant, the entire world turned into a terrifying chaos ocean. Nothing was allowed to exist in the scarlet chaos ocean. In the center of the vast and turbulent sea of chaos, Locke was immersed in it. His entire body was blooming with light at this moment, a scarlet chaos-colored light. At this moment, his body, every cell in his body, is being reorganized and sublimated under the impact of the crazy ocean of chaos around him. Locke's body seemed to have turned into a sea eye, absorbing everything endlessly, madly devouring the vast and endless chaos force around him. I don't know how much time passed, but Locke opened his eyes again. At the moment, the surrounding sea of chaos had been completely consumed. Locke spread his hands and felt a completely different power within his body. This is Yadian father. Yadian father is not just a realm, but a higher level of life. Locke clearly feels that his life has been sublimated. For example, no matter how strong he was in the past, his lifespan was only that of an ordinary person, but now, according to his perception, he could easily live for thousands of years. Not only that, he also has an additional ability, a stance on life. This is the ability that higher beings naturally have. It can offset certain damage and adjust its power at will, so that it will not inadvertently destroy everything in the world because of the overpowering power of Yadian father. I am much stronger now than before. When Locke felt the power in his heart, Kamar Taj, the bald ancient one, sighed with a complex expression, it's too fast, he is indeed a miracle man. Asgard, 
The Hall of the God King, the majestic one-eyed God King Odin suddenly opened his eyes, a gaze that was like substance, seeming to instantly penetrate the heaven and earth and look towards the earth. Midgard, another level sub-God Father is born. Earth, a middle-aged man in formal attire and holding a cane, who looked like an aristocratic gentleman from the old days, gently pressed the hat on his head. A new sub-heavenly father has been born on the earth. This is not good news. Sealed place, underworld dimension. At this moment, countless powerful beings were shaken by the birth of the new sub-heavenly father. Scarlet light suddenly appeared on the sofa, and at this moment, Locke's figure suddenly appeared. The white queen, who was working, suddenly raised her head. When she saw Locke clearly, a charming smile suddenly appeared on her face. Regardless of the work at hand, she stood up and walked to Locke's side, sitting on Locke's body. Locke followed suit. Hold the other person's slender waist. How many days have I been gone? Three days is shorter than the time you originally said. Locke nodded. He originally thought that this breakthrough would take about a week. Has anything big happened in the base recently? Big deal. White Queen thought for a moment. There are no big things, but there are a few small things. Oh, tell me. First of all, Wanda. She is smarter than I thought. She has completed the plans you made very well. Now she is an excellent leader that people can rest assured. The other thing is, the Bruce Banner you brought back is not in good condition. Quote question mark quote. What happened to Bruce Banner? White Queen suddenly pursed her lips and smiled. That guy was hit a bit badly. Who hit him? Tom. Locke raised his eyebrows, Tom. What did Tom do? Create some unscientific works that challenge his scientific ideas. It's not this, but it's almost the same. Tom spent three days, somehow building up a lot of muscle, and then beat the crap out of that Bruce Banner. Locke's expression was startled, and then he couldn't help but laugh. Locke was not surprised that Tom could beat Bruce Banner. Let alone Bruce Banner, if Tom really got the upper hand, he would beat him like the Hulk or even the four-handed Hulk, the Green Emperor, beat the same. After thinking for a while, Locke said, that Bruce Banner, it's time to let him go. Leave. That Bruce Banner has seven doctorates. Why don't you keep such a talent? Locke shook his head. With Tom, we don't have much need for highly intelligent people. What's more, even if we do need them, there are people more suitable than him. Locke didn't like Bruce Banner, which he didn't even bother to hide. A guy with a developed brain and simple limbs, his existence severely restricted the development of Hulk. Among Hulk's more than a dozen transformations, the several forms dominated by Bruce Banner are not considered strong. On the contrary, it is the transformations dominated by Hulk that truly reveal his powerful side, and there are almost no weak ones. Separating Hulk and Bruce Banner requires a long process, and then the base will be handed over to you. After all, it is the separation of souls, and the slightest mistake will affect the souls of both. Locke doesn't care what happens to Bruce Banner, but he doesn't want Hulk's soul to be damaged. White Queen nodded. Don't worry, I will take care of everything. At the same time, in a room, S.H.I.E.L.D. Director Lou Dantu, Iron Man Tony Stark, and General Ross, three people who usually had no contact with each other, were now sitting together. Iron Man Tony Stark looked impatient. Hey, agent, I told you, I have no interest in your little boy organization. Brazed Dantu looked sternly, Tony, you still don't understand, things are completely different now than before. I don't know since when, the number of Superman types began to explode, and Superman type crimes are becoming more and more common. In this case, if there is not a powerful organization that can directly deter those Superman types, this kind of Superman there will be more and more criminals. Tony Stark was a little silent. He used to be proud, definitely, and he is still proud now, but it must be said that the Superman-like group made him deeply fearful. Tony, I need you, everyone needs you. Seeing that Tony Stark's resistance was not so strong, Brazed Eggman naturally continued to work harder. Tony Stark thought for a while, let me think about this first. Good. On the other side, General Ross listened to the conversation between the two and said impatiently, you can talk about your little boy plan yourself. I am very busy and have no time to play children's games with you. With that said, he stood up and prepared to leave. Wait a moment, General Ross. You don't want to know about the Hulk, do you? General Ross stopped leaving,
turned around suddenly, and looked at Brazed Eggman with burning eyes, do you know where Hulk is? Brazed Eggman did not answer directly, but said, General Ross, now you can sit down again and listen patiently. General Ross sat back down, Nick Fury, I don't like others to lie to me. If you really do that, believe me, you won't bear the consequences. Facing General Ross's naked threat, Brazed Eggman's expression remained unchanged. He clapped his hands gently, opened the screen, and began to play the video. You too, this video should be familiar to you. The expressions of General Ross and Tony Stark changed at the same time. The image played by Brazed Eggman was clearly the image of the Hulk erupting not long ago, crushing the enemy's head on with his own power. General Ross looked cold and said coldly, Nick Fury, are you provoking me? Tony Stark's face also looked unhappy. But Lou Dantu shook his head, no, I'm not provoking you. Look here. With Luo Dantu's finger, the illusion master in the image was suddenly magnified several times. Luo Dantu pointed at the position of illusion master's chest. Tony Stark glanced at it. A badge, it looks pretty good, and then what? This is not just a badge. According to my guess, this should be a secret organization, and that badge may be a symbol of this organization. As soon as these words came out, the expressions of Tony Stark and General Ross changed. Organize. That's right, organization. What's even more terrifying is that I suspect that the Hulk is also favored by that organization and wants to be absorbed into it. Also, look at the surface of that badge. This seems to be an Ace of Clubs sign. Yes, based on my guess, I suspect that organization is using playing cards as a symbol. The Ace of Clubs is obviously as dangerous as the Hulk, and there may be four such beings in this organization. Because there are four aces in a deck of playing cards. As soon as these words came out, Tony Stark and General Ross took a breath instantly. Four Hulks can fight against an army on their own. What a terrifying organization this will be. No, we can't wait any longer, we must investigate this organization. It's useless, Tony. Even if you find out, what's the use? Facing four monsters of that level, what chance do you think you have of surviving? Tony Stark was silent for a moment. General Ross looked at Brazed Eggman, then what do you want to do? You too, I need your help. I need you to go with me to meet someone. Who? One may be able to truly detect the existence of that organization on his own. One of the most powerful Superman types, the mutant bipolar, Professor X. Xavier's school for gifted youngsters. Looking at the school's plaque, Tony Stark frowned and said, Agent, is this the school where Superman people gather as you said? With all due respect, in my opinion this is just an ordinary school. Before Brazed Eggman could reply, a voice suddenly sounded in Tony Stark's ears. Mr. Stark, this school is not ordinary, it is a paradise for children. Tony Stark looked around, and finally his eyes fell on a wheelchair not far away that was slowly approaching. There is a middle-aged man sitting in the wheelchair. He seems to be in good spirits. He is a middle-aged handsome guy, and he is still a very elegant handsome guy. Even though he is sitting in a wheelchair at the moment, it does not prevent him from showing his unique personality charm. Tony Stark's eyes only fell on the handsome middle-aged man for a few seconds, and then he quickly flashed to the figure pushing the wheelchair behind him. Oh man, your pussy is so hot. Perhaps I should come here for a walk earlier. Professor, this is really not good news. Chin Gray completely ignored the playboy's teasing and pretended that he didn't exist. Professor X's gentle eyes turned to everyone one by one. Mr. Stark, a big tycoon, and the one next to him should be an agent, and a relatively high-level agent. The last one, I saw on TV, is the military giant General Ross. The Chable, the government, and the military all launched big shots at the same time. It looks like I'm going to be in trouble. The brazed egghead took a step forward and looked directly at Professor X. Professor X, we have something that we need your help with. That must be a very troublesome and troublesome thing. It seems that my peaceful days are coming to an end. Sorry, maybe only you can do this. Professor. The dignified mutant bipolar is not an ordinary cripple. General Ross snorted coldly. Professor X smiled and said nothing. Lou Dantu said. Professor X, we need your help to find a mysterious organization. Organization. Professor X frowned. What kind of organization would bring the three giants together to invite him? 
There is a pit, absolutely a big pit. To be honest, he didn't really want to get involved in something that was obviously a big deal. He just wanted to rely on his ability to protect Xavier's school for gifted youngsters. Professor X, take a look at this, you might change your mind. With that said, Brazed Dantu handed over the tablet. Professor his expression suddenly changed. What a powerful mind control ability. Professor X, if it were you, could you do it? Before Professor X responded, Jean Grey behind him said calmly, definitely. Professor, but he is known as the natural king of the mind. Boiled Egghead didn't care about Jean Grey's answer, but looked directly at Professor X, waiting for Professor X's answer. After watching the video, Professor X took a deep breath, I should be able to do it too. Then who should be stronger between you and him? Professor X shook his head, it's hard to judge without a comparison. Although he said so, looking at Professor X's relaxed attitude, it can be seen that Professor X is still more confident than the other party. Everyone present, even if they don't have any special abilities, are all smart people, and naturally see Professor X's mental state, definitely, this is also because Professor X did not deliberately hide his expression, otherwise as the strongest psychic mutant, he can make no one see what he is thinking. So, what you need me to find is the organization owned by this mysterious psychic master. It is understandable that a psychic master with a high level has attracted the attention of three parties at the same time. After all, once such an existence commits a crime, the destructive power it causes will be very terrible. The organization we are looking for does not belong to this person. To be more precise, this mysterious person is just one of the members of that organization. We suspect that there may be more than one existence of this level in that organization. Impossible. Professor X's voice became louder. Since ancient times, there have always been only a few who can reach the level of level 4 mutant. The mysterious man in the video has obviously reached the level of level 4 mutant. I have seen no more than 5 mutants of this level so far, some of whom have fallen and some have disappeared. The rest, except for his old friend, were only himself and Chin behind him. Definitely, Professor X will definitely not say this. Unfortunately, we have confirmed this point. According to the information we have obtained, this organization should use playing cards as its symbol, and the symbol on this mysterious man, Professor X, I think you have also seen it, is the Ace of Clubs, which does not seem to be the only symbol. After these words came out, Professor X could not help but be silent. Even those who do not play cards know that there are four aces in a deck of cards, which means that the mysterious organization may really have more than one level 4 mutant, or a full 4. At this moment, even the knowledgeable Professor X could not help but be shocked, even though this may just be a guess. Back then, a Black King Shao almost triggered a world war. No one knows the destructive power of the level 4 mutant better than Professor X. It is precisely because of this that Professor X at this moment has an inexplicable fear, even fear. If there is really such a mysterious organization with four level 4 mutants, once this organization wants to do something, I am afraid that no one can resist it. After a long silence, Professor X said, I understand what you want me to do. I will go to investigate that organization, if this mysterious organization really exists. Jin Grey behind him couldn't help but whispered, Professor, do you want to use that? Hearing this, Professor X fell into deep thought. Professor X wearing a helmet is indeed the strongest Professor X, but it is precisely because that power is too strong, so strong that Professor X himself is afraid and doesn't want to use the helmet easily. However, a force suspected of having four level 4 mutants, Professor X felt his scalp tingling when he thought about it. Without a helmet, he felt that he might not be able to withstand it. Looking up, he looked at everyone, everyone, please come to school to rest for a while. I will start to investigate that mysterious organization right away. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support my channel.